Welcome to another edition of Chicago Crossing Model Railroad. It's me, Eric, here with you at the bench on Sunday, taking a look at some Woodland Scenics devices. These are, of course, the Just Plug Light Hub and Expansion Hub, and then this little port sharing device here. Um, I and you and probably a decent fraction of the model railroading community have been using these things for, you know, a decade. Probably, I forget when these were uh, first introduced. Um, they're called Just Plug because they rely on JST sockets, which are Japan's solderless terminals. That is the standard for a number of different electronic devices. And uh, basically, uh, those terminals are like this simple uh, clip-ins. They come in many different sizes. The uh, pitch of the socket is based on the difference between the prongs. This is, this is a 2.5 millimeter pitch. All of the just plug system is. But you can get these in 2.0, 1.5, 1.0, 0.8, uh, 7.5, you name it. So it actually is a much, much broader system than what you see here. This is simply what Woodland Scenics probably settled on, and it's quite common to be able to find the sockets and things like that on Amazon. In any case, you know, these are not the cheapest devices, and my goal here is certainly not to um, rag on Woodland Scenics for making something expensive. The market has spoken. People have these. If you type in Woodland Scenics Just Plug, you will find reviews of these devices going back eight years on YouTube, and you will find model railroaders across the world who are using these. So, you know, about $13, about $11, I think five bucks or something like that, maybe in a pack of two. Um, yeah, they cost money. Go figure, we live in an economy. Um, what I wanted to do instead, though, was to actually do a little bit of exploring as to what is actually inside of these. Simply from the perspective that these have a limited bandwidth in terms of what you can really connect in there. And of course, you can use these port sharing devices. Uh, but potentially, there are options to um, be able to tinker and you know, get a, solder, a soldering breadboard and uh, make some of these devices more or less on your own as a reverse engineering approach. And on top of that, it's always fun to just kind of take something apart and learn what the heck is inside. If nothing else, it's pretty fun. Uh, when we're done with that, what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of other things that are out in the market that I've been using on the layout to deal with LED lighting. You know, suffice it to say, it's a crowded market. Everybody from DCC Concepts to NCE to you name it has uh, DCC enabled lighting uh, hubs and things like that so that you can actually control things as a DCC accessory. And that's all cool. On my layout, I'm using uh, non-DCC lighting and then uh, we'll be using Arduinos for certain effects and things like that. But at least for the moment, it's kind of fun to just take these apart. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, um, if you consider what an expansion hub is, uh, basically all this is supposed to be is more or less a JST-based uh, terminal block with a control jumper that completes a circuit that allows uh, electricity to flow through here. In the absence of that jumper, the circuit is open, nothing happens. If you actually look at the chip that is inside, it is about the simplest possible thing. I'm pretty sure uh, when I was a kid and had the little Radio Shack kit, I probably made something like this. Um, but basically what you see here is a series of, of 2.5 millimeter inputs. You have uh, a power in input here, power out. This is the uh, control switch that requires the jumper in order to uh, complete. And then you have outputs, uh, four of them. So the uh, power source comes in and basically is distributed to all four of uh, the power outputs as well as the power through for daisy chaining. This is the control input, so this is what the jumper actually uh, connects right there. Yeah, really nothing to that, and it's why you don't plug LEDs directly into this. There's literally nothing there to condition the power uh, for them so that you don't happen to burn one out. So. It's just nothing more than a terminal block. And in fact, there's probably a lot of reasons that you can use other terminal blocks besides this uh, if you want to actually run multiple light hubs if you like what's inside of there. So needless to say, in many ways, it's probably the least essential part of the Woodland Scenics 
uh, device because you can buy JST plugs, convert any terminal block that you want into something that has a lot more hubs than this, depending on what it is that you actually need. So here's a look at uh, the interior of a light hub. And as you can see, this is a much more interesting board than that extremely, extremely simple expansion hub. And for a good reason. Uh, again, these are meant to essentially be bulletproof where it's impossible for you to burn out an LED. And it also contains things like uh, control potentiometers so that you can adjust on an individual basis the uh, amount of uh, current that is actually coming through uh, these ports to the LEDs themselves. So I'm not an expert in electronics, but you know certainly uh, one can take a few guesses as to uh, what's going on here. The uh, input for uh, this board is going to be 24 volts, anywhere between 12 and 24 volts is uh, basically uh, DC power. And yet you notice that you've got a, a bridge rectifier here, as well as uh, you also have uh, a capacitor here. This bridge rectifier, I mean, sure, I guess you could actually convert uh, AC to DC power here, uh, but my thinking is between these two elements, capacitor and uh, uh, rectifier, this is probably related to power smoothing and uh, noise reduction, uh, elimination of bouncing or uh, arcing, for instance, when the power is turned on and off with this capacitor, and then this thing probably just prevents flicker. Uh, so by smoothing out the uh, power signal. So that's kind of my guess as to what's going on there. So anyway, taking a look uh, under, uh, at the underside, a couple things uh, you know, kind of uh, come to light here. Um, number one is if you take a look at where these uh, outputs are here, um, what you're seeing is basically this is the positive uh, pole over here and the negative pole over here. First off, you have a 681 ohm uh, SMC resistor there, which is kind of interesting. That appears to be on the positive side. So once again, this may simply be uh, related to uh, conditioning of the signal on the positive end. One thing to note is I and uh, at least uh, one other person online has taken a look at what the voltage output is coming through this rectifier. And if you're running 24 volts, you lose probably, oh, from my uh, voltmeter, around 1.3 to 1.4 uh, volts through the rectifier. So it does actually drop the voltage a little bit. And that means that you can't really run these on particularly lower voltages because between all of the resistors here and everything else, um, I think that just becomes uh, <laughs> a little bit more complicated to get a bright LED with a lower voltage power supply. So 24 really is... Uh, the optimum that I think these were designed for. And if you are purchasing a uh, just, uh, a just plug uh, power supply, it is 24 volt. In any case, if we come back down here, um, you notice that uh, from the negative pole, you have this uh, transistor here. Um, this is, you know, probably related to uh, current control. Uh, that's pretty much the only reason you might have a uh, transistor there. It doesn't seem to be directly linked to uh, the potentiometers over here. So my guess is that this is uh, related a little bit to current control. Now it's not the same as like a, a constant current driver or something like that, but nonetheless, given that it's on the negative side, that might make a little bit of sense because from that, it's also ganged over to uh, the potentiometer complex where you can see the uh, pins for the potentiometer over here. Uh, these potentiometers are uh, B103s. Again, these are you know something that you can just find on the market. Uh, they have on their own a 10 kilo ohm uh, resistance value to them. And then what you see down here is, at least based off of the reading that I was able to do and looking at this, this looks like a 154 kilo ohm uh, surface mount chip resistor. So this is tied to the potentiometer, and uh, that's my guess here. And basically uh, what this is going to do is this is going to be the mechanism for dimming down uh, the LEDs all the way or, you know, having them at maximal brightness. So all in all, that's essentially a tour of the anatomy of a, a just plug board. Um, once again, you just have a few different outputs here, but, you know, there's no reason that you can't 
take these same elements and more or less multiplex something uh, of your choice using breadboards or other mechanisms. Um, it doesn't look all that complicated. And at the same time, it's pretty ingenious. Welcome back. I've got this light hub powered up. Uh, just a couple things that you can note here is I'm using a 24 volt power supply, much as you would get uh, in the package. Uh, just a couple characteristics of this. Number one, the pot here is full open, so we're drawing about 16 milliamps. Um, I mentioned before about that rectifier and voltage drop, and you can actually see that uh, here. So if we uh, just put a voltmeter on the leads, what you see is that we're running uh, really about 22.7 uh, volts out of uh, the output here. So shows you that that rectifier is actually inducing a little bit of voltage drop uh, at any given voltage. And it's also why you really can't run these off of uh, particularly vol low voltage power supplies as you may not actually be able to achieve the forward voltage necessary to light these LEDs. The other point is that 154 uh, kilo ohm resistor is pretty strong. You can take a look at the power supply on the left and you know, <laughs> I mean, it takes about half a turn in this case to completely shut off current to this thing. So these things are really kind of over-engineered for uh, the purpose, but nonetheless, they seem to do the job. So that's well enough. All right. Well, that gives you a good example of uh, how these things actually uh, sort of tick on the inside and in part why uh, at least these things are as uh, expensive as they are. But let's take a look at just kind of the pantheon of options if you're uh, lighting your uh, layout or your diorama and are looking for a few different options. And again, it's not meant to be encyclopedic, but certainly just some options that I have used over time. So what are some of the options that we all have when we're thinking about LED lighting on our railroads? Um, well, there's all sorts of different options, right? I mean, the old school classic way of, of doing LED lighting is just to use like a, a copper wire as a, a rail, uh, either positive or negative, and then you solder your LED street lights to it. Uh, you just run the wire, solder it up to this thing, and then have this set up to a, a power source or something like that. And that's all good. At that point, yeah, you've got a variety of things that you can use, like CCDs like these or uh, resistors, again, kind of the old school way of going about it. Um, there's a reason that that is still a viable approach and that's because it works. <laughs> it's not fancy and honestly, you don't really always need it to be fancy. Um, this is what I have used previously on the underside of the layout. These are uh, essentially terminal blocks. These are from Eve model, I think. Um, I bought these off of eBay. I think they're like maybe uh, 10 bucks for two of them or something like that. And they're basically just screw terminals. Now on the upper end uh, of the scale here are products that will actually emulate and even uh, probably do better than the uh, just plug system in terms of the density or the amount of LEDs that you can actually drive off of uh, one single chip. So this is one example. Um, this is from EVE model. Uh, it's what they call like a self-adapt uh, board. And <laughs> this thing is like a zoo of different connections. So depending on whatever you want, you can connect it in here. It's got uh, two millimeter pitch uh, JST plugs. It also has two different banks. So I think a total of uh, 12 screw, uh, sets of screw terminal terminals for positive and, and negative wires. And then also it has uh, like little plug-in things. It actually comes with all the wire stubs for attaching that, which is kind of nice and convenient. Um, if you look at what is actually on the board itself, um, it will take uh, a, a power supply uh, from 3 to 24 volts. It has an adjustable potentiometer on there. And then I think kind of the same deal. It's basically got a series of, of these uh, surface mount uh, chip resistors as well as a an on-off switch here. It can also be powered through just a regular DC bus through some uh, screw terminals here. And it can be daisy chained uh, through these JST plugs over here to other uh, systems. Then last up, this is about the highest uh, density 
solution that I had found. Uh, this is from a company called We Honest. <laughs> it's sort of love the name, uh, but I also kind of enjoy the price point. This was, I think, $18 and has a lot of the same features as this uh, Eve model, which I think We Honest also sells. You know, all this stuff is very likely coming from the same manufacturer uh, overseas. Uh, but this board has essentially the same features, except now you've got uh, four independent banks of um, JST plugs. These are all two millimeter pitch, uh, just as these are. So what that means is they are not directly uh, compatible with the size of plugs that comes off of a just plug system. So that's important because in order to use something like this, uh, if you if you want to reconfigure your just plug lighting, then it simply means you have to you know snip the uh, connector and solder on a, uh, a, a new connector. And this thing comes with uh, wire stubs with the JSTs already in there. So it's more elbow grease to actually be able to use these. But if you think about it, the number of hubs that are actually here versus the number of hubs that you get for roughly the same price, yeah, it's about seven to eight fold, right? On my layout, because I want to have enough ports to be able to expand out, I'm going to use the just plug system I have uh, simply for the buildings and then use all this stuff for the street lights where as it is, I need to wire in JST plugs anyway in order to make them easily uh, interchangeable if, if uh, the need arises. And the expansion opportunity here and the bulletproofness of JST connectors really just kind of makes it an attractive option for me. But you know, your price point ranges from extremely, extremely, extremely cheap to slightly more expensive to you know, relatively expensive to, I guess, premium grade. Although, you know, once you see what's in here, you realize you can pretty much re reverse engineer these things just based off of the simple elements that are inside. And so I think that's uh, simply good information for any of us uh, in the hobby is you have a lot of options for how you want to actually go about LED lighting. And I think that's all cool. All right. We'll leave it at, at that for today. Great to talk to you again. Glad you uh, came over and visited the channel and uh, talk to you again soon.